with a population of about 560,000 people. Via Vicencio is the capital of the Meta Department. It was officially founded in 1840. The city is located 75 kilometers southeast of the country's capital city of Bogota and sits by the Guatiquia River. It is the most important commercial center in the Llanos Orientales, in English, the Eastern Plains. It has a warm and humid climate with average daily temperatures ranging from 21 degrees to 30 degrees. Lying in a rural zone of tropical climate, Via Vicencio is on the great Colombian Venezuelan plain called the Llanos, which is situated to the east of the Andes Mountains. Via Vicencio is often called La Puerta al Llano, or Gateway to the Plains, due to its location on the historical path from the Colombian interior to the vast savannas that lie between the Andes Range and the Amazon forests. Via Vicencio's proximity to huge mountains and great plains make the city an example of Colombia's geodiversity. Because it is located in the foothills of the Andes, the morning and evening breezes cool the city, which is normally very hot for most of the day. The German conquistador Nicholas Federmann reached the Altiplano of Bogota in 1536 by approaching it from the plains of Venezuela, a large unsettled area that is formed by the Orinoco Basin. However, the vast area of these plains remained unexplored and uncolonized for the next 300 years. Colombia was settled along the mountainous folds of the Magdalena and Cauca valleys, and its commerce with the outside world was oriented towards the Caribbean Sea. Thus, because of its mountainous barriers, the extreme heat, and inhospitable climate, the Llanos remained forgotten and unsettled for many decades. The Llaneros, the inhabitants of the plains, are fierce horsemen who first fought with the Spanish royalists and then for the Venezuelan and Colombian rebels during the War of Independence. During independence, they crossed the Cordillera Oriental with Simon Bolivar and surprised the royalist army on the plains of Boyacá on the 6th of August 1819 which cleared the way for the taking of an abandoned Santa Fe de Bogota the next week. In the 1840s, some farmers from Caqueza, a town to the eastern folds of Bogota, started the modest settlement of Gramalote, which would officially become the parish of Via Vicencio in 1855. The parish was named for Antonio Via Vicencio, a patriot in the Colombian War of Independence. Vaccines, a mule road, and the availability of vast areas of free land drove new colonizers to continue the settlement of Via Vicencio. As the roads improved, the farmers could send their produce and cattle to the markets of Bogota. In 1948, large landowners expelled many farmers out of their lands across the country explained in part by the momentum of the assassination of Jorge Elisa Gaetan, a popular liberal politician. The Llaneros resisted by driving the army out of the population centers. The guerrillas never took Via Vicencio, but they brought the fighting to the military base of Apiay. As the fighting between the government and the Llanero guerrillas was out of control, a military coup in June of 1953 took Gustavo Royas Penilla to power, who immediately negotiated a ceasefire and amnesty for the insurgents. Via Vicencio has grown from a small settlement of no more than 20 people in the 1850s to a settlement of over 400,000 inhabitants in 2011. A new road of bridges and tunnels has shortened the driving time to Bogota from two or three hours to one and a half hours to move the oil, cattle, and agriculture products faster. In recent years, the city has achieved an economic development strengthened by the trade sector. 
thanks to the dynamics generated by the roads that channel to the interior and the center of the country, the agriculture, and the agro-industrial industry of the Llano, as well as the products entering the region from different parts of Colombia. Construction activity is very important. Gas and oil exploitation in the Apiai field are part of the region's mining activity. Cattle, agriculture, and the exportation of crude oil fuel the Via Vicencio economy. Imports from the surrounding area include coffee, bananas, and rice. La Vanguardia Airport serves Via Vicencio with flights to the rest of Colombia on four airlines, including Colombian major airlines Avianca and Latam. Via Vicencio continues to be the main collection and supply center for the municipalities of the Colombian Orinoco region, as well as the main oil and gas producing municipality. However, most of the jobs are being generated in commercial and service activities, that is in non-productive and non-tradable sectors. Large constructions, roads, financial resources, and tourism revolve around these commercial dynamics and services. This means that the department's contribution to the national GDP is less than 2%, a figure that has been maintained over the last 50 years. From its foundation to the present, people from the interior of the country and the coasts have sought and found in the city the conditions and the receptivity to establish themselves. At the same time, they have contributed to forge a mestizo culture in which, nevertheless, they struggle to impose a stronger relationship with the region, a bond of identity with the Yanera culture. Mamona, Coleo, cockfighting, Horopo, dance, legends, myths, the renewed and popularized use of the poncho, among others, are currently struggling not to disappear before the thrust of urban and modern life. Viavo, as the city is affectionately called, is characterized by Llanero folklore and traditions like Coleo, an event where small groups of Llaneros, Colombian cowboys or herders, pursue cattle on horseback, and Jaropo music which uses instruments like harps and maracas to get everyone on their feet and dancing the zapateo. Via Vicencio has many different places of interest to tourists that you can enjoy during your stay, like the Parque Los Fundadores. This beautiful park, which covers nearly 15 acres of land, is the largest in the city. In the park's plaza, you'll find a majestic monument dedicated to the founders, created by famed artist Rodrigo Arenas Betancourt. The park also has a plaza with local food vendors and footpaths, where you can take a stroll or play sports. One of the biggest tourist attractions in Via Vicencio is cycle tourism. For that reason, there are many bike paths that you can use to explore both the urban and natural areas of Meta's capital. In the outskirts of Via Vicencio, you'll find the Mirador Piedra del Amor, an observation site heavily frequented by tourists and hikers who come to enjoy a change of pace. The site offers a peaceful, natural setting with panoramic views of the bustling city below. You can also participate in cultural tourism in the Parque Las Malocas, which has a fascinating trail you can follow to learn about the myths and legends of the plains. 
And if you're interested in learning more about the area's indigenous communities, you can visit Maloka Maguari, where the Huitotos themselves relate the most relevant aspects of their culture. This stunning, picture-perfect scene is made even more beautiful as the day draws to a close, the sun sinking over the horizon in a perfect Llanero sunset. Hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, I have more videos of Via Vicencio and Restrepo, including the story of how I was robbed in Via Vicencio, and you can find all those videos, including more videos of this part of Colombia, the Eastern Plains, in the playlist that is linked in the description below this video. And in that description, you can also find a link to another playlist that I made of the first time that I traveled through Colombia. This was on a bicycle, part of a larger trip bicycling through Latin America. And I have playlists for all those countries that I bicycled through, through Latin America, Eastern Africa, Central and Eastern Europe, etc. All available on this very same YouTube channel, Hum of the Earth. Alternatively, if you'd like to see an interactive map of everywhere that I went, and everything that I got to see and do, I have that map available over at my website, followthehumoftheearth.com. where you can click on the different locations on the map and see the various videos and blog posts that I made of these places. And if you'd like to follow my continuing adventures through Colombia and beyond, you can do so by clicking on the red subscribe button below the video and clicking on the bell to be notified when new videos come out. All right, so that's gonna do it. I hope you guys enjoyed. Have a good one.